All right, thank you guys for tuning in today. You are in for a treat. So July is Minority Mental Health Awareness Month, and today we have Alyssa Bowden with us. What's going on, Alyssa? Not much. I'm just glad to be here. I'm glad you are here too. I'm glad you're here to uh, spill the tea on mental health and what we can do um, to move the awareness of mental health forward. So before we jump in, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you and your background? Well, again, my name is Lisa Cristina Bowden. I'm originally from the Republic of Panama, so I'm not originally from the United States. I moved up here to come to college and ended up staying. So Dallas is like my second home. Um, I'm a licensed professional counselor, speaker, and life coach. I love talking about mental health and spreading the word about mental health so we can break the negative stigmas about mental health. And so I started my private practice. It's called Shining Lights Counseling. And um, I see from little kids to adults at my private practice. I see couples also in family. Um, I provide therapy in Spanish and in English. And that's just a little bit about me and my practice. That's awesome. So you, um, what, tell everybody a little bit about like, what made you want to go into uh, mental health specifically? What lit that fire? Well, I don't, I don't want to sound cliche or anything, but I always was the person that everybody came to talk to, especially mm -hmm. growing up when I was younger. But also I went through a lot of trauma growing up, especially growing up in Panama with the invasion and also a lot of, you know, social injustice that was going on in Panama. Mm -hmm. And then to add on um, a lot of trauma that I went through with um, witnessing the domestic violence that was going on between my parents. So I always felt like there was not enough help for kids like me and that people like me and needed that help and that support so that's kind of what drew me into getting into mental health i wanted to be that help that people needed or that shoulder that people can lean on that's awesome and that's great that you're able to help people across the spectrum um you know you go from kids to teens to adults so that's really good that you're able to be able to tap into all different types of ages yeah. So when, you know, we're talking about mental health right now, there's a lot going on in the world. People are dealing, we're dealing with COVID-19. We have racial injustices going on. People have lost their jobs. Um, kids aren't able to go to school. All of these different things are going on. What can people do? What resources are out there to help people check in with their mental health and that you would suggest for them to utilize and leverage? Well, I'll definitely say first follow me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Because well, I do put a lot of mental health uh, tips out, especially mm -hmm. a lot about self-care, because I feel that even though we're going through all of this situation, that people still need to focus on their self-care and focus inward so then they can outwardly help other people. So, you know, first of all, focus on the self-care. So that's why uh, I said me first, mm -hmm. but also just other pages on like Facebook and Instagram, like on Facebook, there's a page called Black Mental Health. Um, it's just, anybody can join that page, but it's focused on minority mental health. Um, and they give, t like mental health counselors are on there giving tips so that people can also follow them and get, if they were looking for a therapist, mm -hmm. find a therapist of color in their area, especially here in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, also, another page that I would recommend is called Bring Change to the Mind.org. And the reason why I recommend that page is because it has tips for every, regardless of what race you are, they have tips for everybody and they have links to different groups so let's say you're looking for a christian therapist they will have a link for a list of christian therapists if you're looking for um lgbtq therapists that focuses on that you'll be able to find something 
on that page that takes you there. So it has a lot of connections to other people's sites. And maybe some books to maybe read. Um, there's a book called Boundaries by Henry Cloud. And it's really good because it is, um, it's just showing us how to set proper boundaries with others, especially family and friends, which is the hardest people to set boundaries with, right? And I think um, setting boundaries is a big part of self-care. So um, learning to say no. I talked about that once yeah. before in a podcast episode. I mean, it's a complete sentence. I think sometimes when we yes. say no, we feel that we need to give an entire page or paragraph after that, like <laughs> explain ourselves for what? Yeah. It's, I, you know, I no thank you, no, that's it. There's no need for that. No, no, yeah, you know, and I think, you know, especially like at a time like right now where, you know, people are, we're practicing social distancing and some people may be like, well, you know, I'm having my birthday party. Well, why aren't you coming? And you're like, uh, we're in a pandemic right now. <laughs> like, exactly. No, like they, you, they still want an explanation as to why you're not coming, and so and there shouldn't be no explanation. It's common sense to me, but yeah. you know, everybody's everybody has a different perspective when it yeah. comes to COVID, and also all the stuff that's going on. Everybody got their own view, so you got to stick to your own views and your opinions, and just say no if you you feel it's not right in your gut. Mm -hmm. So Boundaries is a good book for that. Um, podcasts that you could follow, of course, yours. Yeah. But um, Therapy for Black Girls podcast is great. It's really amazing because is um, she, the, the lady that is hosting the podcast, she is a mental health counselor. Mm -hmm. But then she invites other mental health counselors to come in and talk about I listen to topics. that one personally. Yeah, I listen it's to really that good. as well. So there's a little bit of everything on there, different topics at least. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there, I mean, there's a, a lot of resources out there. I think yeah. a lot of people think there's not, but just a simple Google search of what you're trying to find, you'll be able to find it because there's so much out there. And then just general pages like NAMI, Mental Health America, or like, general pages mm -hmm. that will have again links to other people's sites depending on what you're looking for and um on nami right now i'm gonna post the link um and provide some additional details but i had gone on there and they actually have an e-course uh bhw's instructors healthcare professionals that you can check out it's for free and it'll yes. just guide you through it um, during this time. And so if you have time, you can utilize that. Use it as a CEU if you would like. If you're a uh, um, CHW here in Texas, you can utilize that as one of your non-DSHS certified, uh, you know, CEUs. So I'm going to post that. So for people that are like, okay, mental health, you know, that's not me. Not me. I don't have anything going on with me. How would you describe what? is mental health what is that if someone is thinking well maybe or they feel like maybe not could you describe what is that sure so mental illness are health conditions involving changes in emotion thinking and or behavior right mm -hmm. or a combination of those mm -hmm. but um mental illness don't always have to be like some big distress it could be a simple as a social problem, a, a problem at work, or a family problem that is affecting you emotionally, right? And mm -hmm. mental illness is very, very common. Ne um, nearly one in five U.S. adults experience some form of mental illness. You know, one in 24 have a serious mental illness. So, I mean, it's very one common. in five. One yes. in five. Wow. Yes. So people think, oh, um, I'm not crazy. The, it, it, don't, it doesn't have to. I think we see movies yeah. and we see shows and we see the extremes of mental illness when it's not even like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of mental illness is just people that, are, people that have mental illness are walking around you every day. You will never know. Every day. 
Yes. Every day. I mean, depression and anxiety, I've been there, you know, I, yeah. I've been there. Um, yeah, I've been there. And so I Me think too. that the best thing you can do is seek counseling. I went through counseling right around the time when my father had passed away. I mean, I was depressed. I isolated myself. I went through all of that. And so I tell people, you know, you can dip into a state that you do not want to go into. And so you have to, you have to reach out to people, reach out to resources and you'll eventually, you know, work yourself back um, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, get better. And so I think a lot of people feel that, Oh, I just need to talk to a friend, but a friend mm-hmm. is not going to be unbiased. A mm-hmm. friend is not going to be, they know your history and all that. So they're going to, they already have a formulated opinion about you and they're going to say how they feel. Um, a therapist now is unbiased and they're able to help you and give you the tips you need to get through the, the situation. So, I mean, you need both. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. You still need social support, but a lot of people think that they just need to rely on their friends and that's not fair to your friends either. Um, yeah. Putting that weight on your friendship. So can you explain a little bit about why are people uh, hesitant to go seek counseling? Why, what are some reasons that people don't usually go? Oh, there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> but, um, and I well, ask that, the reason I ask you that is because somebody may be listening right now and that's them. They're kind of <laughs> on the edge. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. And then giving them the tools and giving them the reason behind why they really should take that next step. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people do the finances. They they feel that, okay, I don't want to spend this money on my mental health. I'd rather use it for something else when your mental health is so important. Um, also, lack of representation. A lot of people feel like if I can't go see a therapist that's going to fully understand me, um, if I'm a minority, I want the therapist to understand where I'm coming from in that sense. And there's, there is a lack in different cultures, um, therapists in different cultures. And I'm not just talking about um, race. I'm also talking about just in beliefs mm-hmm. in LGBTQ ideals, all those type of things. There, there is a lack, unfortunately. But um, the good thing is that now they're trying to improve on the cultural uh, on cultural competent therapists so they're trying to train therapists that are like for example even though i am a minority i'm a woman um i'm hispanic and also um african uh, descent that still doesn't mean i cover every single uh culture for example i'm heterosexual so I have to um, educate myself mm-hmm. on LGBTQI uh, issues so then I could be competent to be able to see them mm-hmm. in my practice. So that'll be a perfect example. Just because you're a minority doesn't mean you will understand everything that's going on. Mm-hmm. So as a therapist, we need to keep up our education and make sure we are really um, able to see the people that we're seeing um another reason why somebody might not want to um see a therapist is because they feel that they're weak if they're going to see a therapist like oh well my parents um went through this that and the other and they didn't need a therapist oh yeah i've heard that before yeah i've heard that so many times and that just because you you see your parents going through that and they had to put up with it doesn't mean that didn't affect their mental health there's a difference i think the previous generations were good at covering up Mm -hmm. their emotions because they had to Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now we have the opportunity to really take care of ourselves and we should use that opportunity now and I think eventually you want to break the cycle. You want to be that able too. to face those things head on 
that were may have been traumatic for you and you want and you, then if you have a family you don't want that to carry on you don't want your kids to then think that it's okay for this that, that this is normal when it's not and teaching them how to talk through that and communicate through that and you yourself learning along the way um i think sometimes that's where we you know we 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 uh we bump heads with yeah, friends or yeah. family when you start talking about those things that you put a two tons of sugar on, you've sugarcoated <laughs> everything, <laughs> you know, and now it's like, you know what? No, these are my boundaries, like you said earlier, and I'm trying to go in a new direction. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, and I think another big issue, especially in the communities of color, is just, it's just taboo. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, that's a, you know, I've heard a lot. That's a white people thing, mm -hmm. or you know, we don't go through that mm -hmm. in our community. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. It um, mental illness doesn't care who you are. <laughs> That's right. And um, I think social economical challenges. I mean, there's so much to dive in. I mean, the, also the history, especially with minorities, the history of us in the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. all the stuff that were done to us as you know like the tuskegee um situation things mm -hmm. like that um we kind of don't trust the healthcare system so that's another barrier that i would say comes into mind and then not having again not having the money and not having the education on what is mental health also affects our communities because i think the first thing that comes to mind is they're gonna lock me up and call me crazy and it's gonna affect my life than benefiting it when that's not the case um i mean it has to be something real extreme for somebody to be put in a mental institute all right it has to be like a really bad mental health issue and as an adult you have the choice to stay in there or not you know you don't have to stay in any place that you don't want to it's not like they're gonna lock you up for life like it's jail or something mm -hmm. yeah so what is some advice you would give uh us as healthcare professionals or chw working in the community with people all different types of people when working with a challenging client in the mental health space so you know maybe they come in and they're closed off they don't want to share what's going on you're trying to help them provide them resources what are some tips and tools to help navigate conversation with someone that has mental health issues going on well it just depends because some people are just not ready for therapy or not open to it and you as a therapist you need to decipher okay is this client ready for therapy? Is it they might need some somebody else instead of me? Or if I just need to build a rapport with this person. So it just depends on the person and the situation because sometimes I might not be the right person, the right therapist for this person, but I might know somebody else that that is very proficient in whatever the situation is and might be able to help this person. So as a therapist, sometimes we have to really sit down and think about the situation and also just um, have that conversation with the client and see where their mind is and see where how they're feeling about therapy with you or if they're even ready for therapy. Because a lot of people are just not ready for therapy and that's okay when they are they can always come back or they you as a therapist need to know when to let go and when to keep the person Ooh, that's say that again <laughs> because well, chws we build relationships relationship building is the big one of the biggest components i think um you you know you start working with people in the community and you see them all the time and once again boundaries you have to lay those early so that mm -hmm. lines aren't crossed. Um, you know, definition of a CHW is a trusted member of the community. And so you may see them quite often, but you have to have those boundaries in place to where it's like, okay, 
Um, now we're getting into, like you said earlier, um, you know, some some areas in which you already know this person, so you you kind of have like a picture of them in their in your head. Yeah. And so I think that's that's the important. You got to know when to hand them off to someone else that may be able to better serve them. And we can't help the world. That's easy to do, to exactly. want to do, is to help the world, you know. But sometimes yeah. people may not just be ready. And that, and that's fine to have that mindset of, I want to help the world. But yeah. you have to also be realistic. And some people, you might just open up a little window. And then the next person that sees the opens up the actual full door, right? And you have to be okay with that. And not everybody you're going to save and help. And I think, especially new therapists, new uh, community workers, mm-hmm. have that mentality of, dun, 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 I'm going to help I'm everybody. here to save the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's a good attitude to have. But that then, was so me. <laughs> it was me too when I started as a, as a young counselor. But then I realized not everybody um, I'm going to be able to get to. And that's mm-hmm. okay. And is and sometimes it's not even about you. It's just the, how the process is. Sometimes people are just not ready for what you're giving them, mm-hmm. and you have to be okay with that. I mean, I try my practice to be creative and use different ways of communication through like art and music and things like that to open up people. But sometimes it just don't. If it is if they're not ready for that, they, I have to be okay with it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow as a community help because you want to help people mm-hmm. and you see the potential in people. But again, you have to let that go. So earlier you talked a little bit about the importance of self-care and so caring mm-hmm. for individuals in the community. It can take a lot, a lot out of us. Um, so what is something that you actually do for self-care? I mean, you have a lot of people come into your practice that are sharing things that may be heavy. So what's something that you do to align yourself and make sure you're taking care of self? Well, I'm a super healthcare advocate, but sometimes I don't practice what I preach, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's most of us um, that work in this field. But I try to do simple daily self-care things um, like okay, drinking enough water. Like a lot of people think self-care has to be this big, luxurious thing of I'm going to go get massage and go to the spa. Self-care is daily things that you can do to help yourself and to, it, it improves your life, right? So um, getting, just trying to get enough sleep, listening to music, dancing. Um, art helps me. So I like to draw and paint. Initially, that was going to be my my career really yeah i was gonna study art like in high school that i was in studio art and advanced art and this and that and the other and but i always had that in my mind still the mental health piece so then i still de- i decided to change routes and go through the mental health side of things and i implement art yeah that's cool that's cool session. so that's how i still use it I'm not an art therapist, though. Let me make sure and say that because it's a big difference. A lot of people might think that, but um, art therapists have to go through their own like certifications and things okay. like that. So I do not consider myself an art therapist, but I use art in therapy. So there's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, um, no, don't, don't, don't say I said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to make sure, but I want to give credit where credit is due. Yeah. Uh, the people that do art therapy not only they have to get like art like an art degree almost but then also they have to do go through the process of getting their certification as a counselor or social worker mm-hmm. so it's it's a lot of work to get to that level um but another thing i do for self care is just speaking to friends and family um laughing i like watching comedies and things like that you know just take my mind off of um you know what's going on right now and um just praying also i use my faith a lot to help me get through some of these times and another boundary that i put is putting boundaries Mm -hmm. that is a big self-care 
a lot of people don't think that is self-care, but boundaries with people in my life, I have to make sure and, and set them. P again, I'm the norm normally the person that everybody comes to. It's just natural. And I set boundaries with people in my life. That doesn't mean I don't talk to them and, and he hear them out. But if I'm drained from talking all day in the counseling session, um, I need to set those boundaries and say, hey, tomorrow I'll talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'll listen another time so that I can replenish myself. Because, again, I, do, I truly feel that we supposed to be giving from an overflow, not from a, from the last drop in our yeah. cup. Yeah. So I'm a true believer in that. So when you practice self-care, you fill up your cup and it's overflowing, then you can have the energy and the time to give to others. Mm -hmm. So that's why self-care is so important to me. Thank you for sharing that. And so for, you know, some people out there that, may feel that you know you're not just you're not giving yourself enough self-care listen to her some of her tips that she has implemented into her daily lifestyle and that may also help you because it's easy it's really easy to take care of everybody else and not self so make sure that you are giving from that overflow and so we've talked about the different resources we've talked about what mental health um, is mental illness is um, you've given us some advice um, on different ways that we can uh, engage with the clients that we may have if it's a challenging, you know, situation. But what overall is one nugget or a couple of nuggets you would like to leave everybody with when it comes to mental health awareness? Mm. Well, I'll definitely say be mindful of yourself right i think uh, we're always um on social media looking at other people and doing other things and we don't take time to really be introspective so i think it's important to really look at ourselves and say i need and be honest with ourselves when we need help and if you do need help to go looking for that help you know, and, and stop with the excuses also, because I think a lot of us, well, I don't have money. Well, there's a lot of people that do pro bono. Well, I don't uh, have the time. Is your, is your um, health important? Then you need, you need to make time for it. You know, again, there, there's millions of excuses that we can put up for not taking care of ourselves and not doing the right thing. But we really need to start taking care of ourselves. The same way a lot of people go to the gym every day and work out and take care of themselves, we need to also take care of our mental health. Mm -hmm. So um, the main nugget will be self-care, taking care of yourself, and taking time for yourself so that you can be a better person for not only yourself, but your family and the people around you in your community. That's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you for sharing that. So where can people continue this conversation with you? Where can people follow you online and connect with you? Well, I have a website, it's shininglightsllc.com. And also um, on Facebook and Instagram is shininglightsllc. Um, I'm having a program coming up about friendship and mental health on July 15th is going to be on Facebook live. So you guys check it out. Awesome. I will definitely be checking that out. Thank you for sharing that. So I'll, I will post all that information in the show notes, everybody. So you guys make sure to reach out to her and take care of yourself. Thank you yes. so much for coming on today. I appreciate you dropping these gems because we do need to take care of ourselves, especially with everything that's going on right now. All right. Definitely.